This is a story of how a corrupt multinational oil company, lingering ethnic tensions, and lack of attention from the West all serve to undermine efforts to transform a Marxist state into a democratic African nation. Congo's troubled history dates back to 1960 and its independence, when the Republic of Congo became a Marxist-Leninist single-party state. President Denis Sassou Nguesso assumed power in a coup in 1979 and ruled through political repression. Meanwhile, the French oil company Elf was all-powerful and could do anything it wanted in the country. In 1990, labor disputes and popular resentment empowered opposition leaders to demand democratic uh, reform. Sasso and Gueso ultimately agreed to allow uh, elections, and a new country was born, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC. The new president, Pascal Lusuba, however, was quickly faced with political troubles, and to make matters worse, the treasury was empty. So the new government took a hard look at ELF's uh, dealings with the former government. But ELF refused to open its books. To further show its contempt, when a big oil spill occurred near Pointe Noire, ELF didn't even allow the Minister of the Environment to uh, inspect the dam. Nevertheless, ELF, now a subsidiary of the French oil giant Total, uh, was worried that the new government would uh, uh, threaten its interests, and it lobbied France to push the DRC to leave ELF alone. The reasons for this were clear. ELF's contracts gave the Congo only 13% of oil revenue, while Gabon and other countries got 51%. It turns out ELF was covering up a major scandal which uh, resulted in the CEO being fired and jailed in 1996. ELF also had its own intelligence service and allegedly supplied money and arms to African allies when it suited its interests. ELF then began uh, actively opposing Lusuba and supporting Sasso Ngueso. At the same time, the Congolese government pursued a much more advantageous deal with the U.S. oil company Occidental. That really ticked off France and ELF, which feared it could ultimately exclude the uh, oil company from the lucrative Angola uh, oil contracts. Sad to say, thereafter things began to unravel, and rather quickly. Lusuba's coalition won the next election, but the results were violently opposed by the opposition. The country slid into a protracted civil war. ELF supplied the opposition with arms and money, and Sasso and Gueso eventually regained power in a bloody coup. Occidental Oil sold its uh, interest back to the government. James Phillips, who was U.S. ambassador in Brazzaville in the early 1990s, calls this a missed opportunity and believes that the West, and specifically the U.S., could have done a lot more to help the struggling republic. Sasso and Gueso is still president of the DRC. ADST, follow us for more.